Hey guys, this video is sponsored by Ibble. Make sure you guys download the app, follow me, and talk to me on there. We all have those points in life where we just wish there was some sort of step one, step two, user manual to life that just told us exactly how to fix our problems and get over the hump. I have definitely been there. You guys know I've been open about a lot of mental health struggles that I've had, and so I can definitely relate to wanting that user manual, but BetterHelp is the next best thing. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists 100% available online. Plus, it's affordable. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to match yourself with a therapist, and if things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless search for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Blair. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Blair. Hey guys, welcome back to the newest episode of the Blair White Project. I don't even know what number we're on, which is why I didn't say episode, I don't know, 20, 21, who knows? Although it's probably around 20 at this point. Someone tell me in the comments. So, bitch. We have a lot to talk about. Tomorrow's midterms. Hope everyone's voting. Hope everyone's voting red, but hope everyone's just voting. Um, and so that's one thing, but we have a lot of other stuff to talk about. I have some really insane stories here I want to go over. And can I just say briefly how much I appreciate the podcast format that I'm doing here? Because there's so many things that like I want to talk about all the time and news I want to react to and give my take on that isn't really like main channel, like full video appropriate. So... It's amazing I can do it on the podcast here with you guys. So Dwayne Wade accused of exploiting transgender daughter for financial gain. Listen, this, this, this is messy. And I'm going to start off by saying, who knows the real truth here? You never know what really goes on in families, right? You, you just don't. You can speculate from the outside. You can accuse one parent of doing this and one parent of doing that. Who fucking knows? But what this, the gist of the story is basically Dwayne Wade's ex-wife is claiming that he is using uh, this, I believe the trans daughter is 17, I believe 17, to make a bunch of money, to become famous, to acquire brand deals and endorsements and things like that, that do come along with being trans and famous. Uh, and this is just messy. So... His ex-wife is fighting a legal petition to allow their daughter to change their gender and name, claiming the child is being pressured financially to make this monumental decision. So basically, the trans kid is in the process of changing their name and gender legally, uh, which isn't the biggest deal. You know, it's not as if it's a sex change at this point, uh, which if I was the mother and there was this going on, that would be the thing that would freak me out. Um, name and gender can be reversed on legal documents, although, you know, not to minimize it, it still is a big deal. And if you're in a situation where you're not with the parent of, you know, your child and that parent thinks you're trans, the, the kid is trans, that one doesn't, like that is, who even knows? I mean, fortunately, in this situation, there's a whole lot of money and resources to go around. And so everyone's going to be a-okay. You know what I mean? However, when it comes to other cases like this one right here, Texas father says seven-year-old isn't transgender, igniting a politicized outcry. This was the James Younger case, which I covered years ago on this channel because this is a case that's been going on for years, a situation that's been going on where the dad literally lost custody of his child for not adhering to the idea that the child is trans. Now, when you come out as trans, like, it's hard for me to really speculate on if this kid is really trans, right? Like, who knows, you know? I felt like I was trans at a young age. Don't believe I could have consented to transition before I was 18. But regardless, um, people who are actually trans typically do feel that at a young age. You know, it's interesting because parents do have to mourn the child when they come out as transgender. I had this conversation with my mom recently um, where I kind of asked her, like, you know, I get that it's all fluffy rainbows and sunshine that I'm trans and you accept it. And I thank you so much for that because there are people who are not as lucky in my position. You know, there are trans people who are disowned from their family, et cetera, et cetera. In my situation, my mom is all down. And you guys know my dad is deceased. Who knows how he would have felt, but my mom's cool with it. Um, but I did tell her, I was like, you know, when you transition, there's all this focus on, you know, the trans person and making sure they're good. But like, how are you with it? Like now we're seven years in, like, how do you feel about the fact that like your son is like gone or whatever? 
And, you know, she said that she has had to actually mourn it. And there's not enough to be said about that. You know, I think that oftentimes when you're trans, you get focused on like what you're going through and what's going on with you and not necessarily enough of like how the family is actually processing it. And granted, there are these ugly situations where the family is being an asshole about it. And so you understand why the trans person would alienate themselves. But, you know, trans people should allow grace and the opportunity for their family to go and process it fully and, and mourn a loss because there is a loss there, right? I don't personally see myself as an entirely different person post-transition. I don't see myself as like, oh, the person I was is dead. Like, I don't believe in that. I think it's just an evolution of who I am as a person overall. But in my mom's eyes, her son is gone. Um, but long story short, there's some shady stuff with this. I'm gonna just read this. Um, okay correction the trans daughter Dwayne Wade's is not 17 she's 15 so this is even even worse um it says that she is claiming that her famous ex-husband is attempting to circumvent the requirements of the Illinois final custody order judgment entered on March 14 2011 would that be like with a name change you can circumvent that I don't think that's the case um th this is it says that she is straight up saying the child might be influenced by an opportunity for the NBA star to make money if the gender change is completed. Saying that Dwayne directly told her that money was partially behind the decision. And she wrote, I have concerns that Dwayne may be pressuring our child to move forward with the name and gender change in order to capitalize on the financial opportunities that he has received from his companies. She explains that in April 2022, Dwayne invited um, her to one of his residences in Atlanta and during this time he informed her that a lot of money had already been made over the child's transition and that additional money will be made in relation to our child's name and gender issue. Dwayne told me, this is a quote from her, saying that he intended to make our child very famous due to the name and gender issue and also informing that there would be endorsements and contracts associated therewith. So listen, this could all be fabricated by the ex-wife, who fucking knows, however, it is true that this child, by virtue of being trans and coming out, is massively famous now in a way that the child would not be if they were not trans. And with that does come endorsements. And so I think two things can be true at once. It's like, we're gonna have to see how it plays out, uh, but that's it's really unfortunate either way that a family is broken to this point, you know? All right, you guys, the holidays are coming up and it is the time to put off shipping until the last minute, right? Wrong. Because now you have ShipStation. When you're buried in orders and emails from customers shipping things out, ShipStation is going to be your best friend. So this holiday season, give yourself the gift of stress-free holiday shipping. Using promo code Blair today, you can get a 60-day free trial at ShipStation.com. That is ShipStation.com, promo code Blair. And thank you so much to ShipStation for sponsoring the Blair White Project. So if you haven't started shopping for the holidays yet, let me just make the process really simple for you. Go to buyraycon.com slash Blair White. You need to get your loved ones, whether it's your mom, your dad, your coworker, your fitness friend, or even yourself, you need to get products from Raycon. Raycon offers premium audio products like earbuds, headphones, speakers at half the price of other premium audio brands. So right now go to buyraycon.com slash Blair White and use code EARLYBF for 20% off. Site-wide, by the way. That's 20% off any Raycon product, which rarely happens. Or you can save even bigger and get 30% off of Raycon's holiday gift bundles. That's code EARLYBF at buyraycon.com slash Blair White for 20% off your Raycon purchases. Buyraycon.com slash Blair White. And thank you to Raycon for sponsoring my podcast. But back to the podcast. TikTok's Chinese platform enriches kids while US version dumbs them down. So this is something that I talked about on Rogan when I did Rogan, um, about how the TikTok algorithm literally shows Chinese kids different videos than US ones. And not just by virtue of like location, like of course I'm gonna be served content closer to my location, but, but by content. So basically there is this report that's come out um, in a recent episode of 60 Minutes that just highlights the differences between the algorithms in both countries. You guys know that TikTok is, you know, I don't know if it's created by the Chinese government, but the Chinese government has their hands all up in it and they have control over what their citizens see. And you guys know that China is just more strict with social media in general. There are certain websites in China that you can't even access. And it's just basically 
a times 20 version of what we have in the US or what the left was trying to have us have in the US. Um, so basically the gist of this is if you are in China and you are a kid and you are on TikTok, you are gonna see videos of science experiments, of you know people building things, of you know encouragement to do well in school. And in the US, you're gonna see like 12 year olds coming out as non-binary. <laughs> you're gonna see you know, dumbasses just doing dumbass dances. It's that is the difference. And, you know, what people don't really understand is that the US is kind of in a low-key Cold War with China. And the fact that China is controlling the content that the US sees is absolutely an aggression, in my opinion. You know, the fact that they're literally attempting to dumb down US citizens, which do they really need to work that hard? I mean, we're doing it to ourselves, but it's just one of these interesting things. And you keep hearing talk about how TikTok is going to be banned in the US. I know that Trump was saying he was going to do it at some point. And he didn't. I kind of wish he did. Not because I believe in like TikTok in itself is like a bad thing, but the way in which the Chinese government is using it to infiltrate American data, American citizens, and to literally now make us dumber. Probably should have fucking banned TikTok, Trump. I'm kind of over Trump lately. We're going to get to another story. A about the latest like why Blair is over Trump. I've talked about it a few times on this podcast. It's like, I feel like his time has come and gone. Um, I could be wrong. And if it comes down to Trump and like, I don't know, like Biden again on the ballot or God forbid Newsom, like obviously I'll be voting Trump, but rooting for DeSantis, but we're gonna get to that. Also, I love this thumbnail that the post millennial used for this TikTok story, which is just Dylan Mulvaney eating pizza, being a dumbass. Interesting point about Dylan Mulvaney. ADHD rant. Um, I was hanging out with Michael Miles the other day and he said something about the video I did on Dylan and he was like, you know, it makes sense why Dylan is being promoted in the White House as opposed to other trans people like you or Caitlin or even like the lived out ones like the Carmen Carreras or the Lauren Byrne Coxes because in accordance to sort of the agenda that's taking place, it's like Dylan is sexless in a lot of ways, right? Like Dylan is harmless and childlike in a way that reaches children, right? His content is like playing with Barbies, like going through puberty, but using tampons. Like It is literally geared toward little ass kids, which definitely promotes the agenda of, you know, child sex changes. And then it's just like, it just makes sense. It's like, why would they put a Caitlyn Jenner up? First of all, the politics, but also it's like, Dylan is made for kids. It's just, it's just, I'm still mad about Dylan being at the White House. If I had to have picked a trans person to be at the White House instead of Dylan, people can drag me for this and feel free to drag me. I don't fucking care. I would have picked Caitlyn. Hear me out. I would have picked Caitlyn because Caitlyn is politically seasoned in the sense of like she's been involved in politics for many, many years. I think that is automatically a qualifier over a Dylan fucking Mulvaney who has been on TikTok for six months. Caitlyn's been involved. Um, you know, Caitlyn's on Fox News. Caitlyn is a Republican, which means it would be bipartisan. It'd be, you know, the meeting of worlds to have Biden and Caitlyn talking. Caitlyn, you know, say what you want about the, mis the mistakes Caitlyn's made. However, Caitlyn is pretty based in a lot of her takes on trans issues. I mean, I align with her on a lot of these issues. Like she's against trans women in sports. Check. She's against children transitioning. Check. She thinks Tom Mulvaney's a clown. Check, check, check. Um, I don't think Caitlyn's perfect by any means and Caitlyn's made a lot of mistakes, but if I had to pick a trans person to be in the White House representing trans people, it would be Caitlyn just because I would think that it would at least be articulate and it would at least be, you know, reaching over the aisle a bit because it's a Republican and a Democrat. That just makes sense to me. But of course, um, I actually do agree with Michael that Dylan's perfect because Dylan reaches kids and that's ultimately what the fuck they want to do. So just unfortunate i'm glad i'm banned from tiktok by the way it's just such a headache so next oh this one's gonna piss me off it's already making me mad washington state still requires five-year-olds to mask in speech therapy what a fucking nightmare like i just is there anyone who doubts that the mask if you are still wearing the mask in 2022 without being immunocompromised 
that is your MAGA hat. That is your signifier that you are on a team. That is your cult. That is your side. And you are literally wearing it to virtue signal. That's my opinion. And the fact that, again, the pandemic is going to be remembered as society putting old before the young, which is never the sign of a healthy society. You don't put the old and the unhealthy in a priority above the young. No one suffered more than kids during the pandemic. So let's just read some of this. Last week, the 975 days of one man rule in Washington state, a state of emergency declared at the onset of the pandemic fully came to an end. However, after 85 different orders, including closing schools, shuttering businesses, wearing masks and vaccine mandates, Democrat Governor Jay, what's his name? Inji Inslee, Department of Health Secretary, I'm not gonna pronounce that name, Yumer Sare, girl, bye signed an order a few days before the state of emergency lapsed, which will continue to mandate that children in speech therapy wear masks. How the fucking fuck does that make a single bit of fucking sense? Please explain it to me in the comments. Maybe I'm fucking crazy, but they're in speech therapy, which involves viewing the mouths of people who are engaging in speech. And you are making these kids wear masks. These kids who are not dying of COVID, these kids who are not affected almost at all. It is virtually, look at the numbers of kids who are suffering and dying from COVID. It is virtually zero. There's always going to be those offset cases, but those kids should be at home. They should be in a hospital. Making these kids mask still in 2022, like what the fuck? You know, whenever I miss, because sometimes I, I do be missing the West Coast. You know, I'm going back there for Thanksgiving soon. And sometimes, you know, I, I love Austin and I love Texas, but sometimes I, sometimes I think about like, man, like the West Coast, it was just, it's so where I'm from, you know, it's in my blood. It's like the ocean and LA and San Francisco and NorCal, it's like, I miss it. However, I think of shit like this, how California, Oregon and Washington had that like three state partnership during the pandemic to enact all these disgusting policies. It's like, no, I, I could never go back, at least not to live. And all, obviously this is like an extreme case, but this is just goes to show that when you give government power, it's not as if they just let it go willingly. It's not as if they just relinquish it. Like people are still suffering from these policies. And this is the problem as well with like, when they started announcing like the end of the pandemic and they started giving like, you know, the media sort of the okay to like, start talking about how it's coming to an end. You notice there was a memo that was released. It was like the same sort of like week that all these talk shows were talking about, like, you know, when COVID happened, past tense, it was like, oh, okay, someone got the memo. However, the, this is the problem with like saying like, oh, COVID is over. There is still a litany of policies that are still there that people still have to deal with that you still have to address. And again, these are the people that want amnesty, right? These are the people that we're supposed to say, you know what, let's just forgive and forget. Like, yeah, you took away our freedoms. You masked our kids. You threw the entire country into a mental health crisis, a substance abuse crisis, you know, but amnesty, we forgive you. No, fuck no, fuck you. These people deserve prison and nothing short of that. Like disgusting. These, how does that even make sense? Speech therapy for children and they're wearing masks. I hate it. Hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it. All right, guys. Here's on to the sort of story I teased earlier. By the way, I'm like, can't. Going through rough patches is such a normal part of life for everyone. Unfortunately, life does not come with the user manual. And during those valleys, you need someone to sort of just steer you in the right direction. Whether it's marriage problems, family problems, career issues, BetterHelp is going to be your best bet. And you should never feel ashamed to utilize therapy. I actually did therapy recently in June and no lie, it led to a huge breakthrough in my life and actually gave me a greater understanding of why I am the way I am. I'm not gonna get too personal here, but therapy is A-OK -okay in my book. A lot of us also come from cultures that don't necessarily, you know, agree with or like or understand the process of therapy. I definitely came from a family that would denigrate the idea of therapy, but the older I get, the more I realize a lot of us need it, including myself. 
As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It's that simple. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless search for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Blair. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Blair. Right wingers turn on Trump for mocking DeSantis. What an idiot, it says the headline. The reaction was swift after the former president called Florida governor Ron DeSanctimonious. So I get that if it's going to come down to Trump versus DeSantis for president, that they got to start gearing up beefing, right? That's just how it works. However, why Trump would choose to do that two days before midterms when like we need DeSantis and we need people to be voting red, it's like, how is that productive in any way? Like attacking DeSantis trees for midterms for what? You know, like I said, if it comes down to in the end, Trump v. Newsom, Trump v. Biden, Trump v. fucking who else, right? I'm voting for Trump. However, when I think about it, and it's going to be very real here, and, and you know, right wingers, right wingers and Republicans, conservatives in the comments, we can do the tribal thing and get mad at me for saying this, but just hear me out for a second. Lockdowns were under Trump. The only I felt the most not free in my life. I lived in America my entire life, born in America. The only time I ever felt truly like not free was under the Trump presidency under lockdowns. And we can sit here and say, well, yeah, it was because of the states. Yeah. But you know what? Trump allowed the states to do that with a fucking quickness. The way that Trump is pushing the vaccine. You know, I get that Trump sees it as his legacy of sorts or not even of sorts. I, I think that Trump probably sees the vaccine as the thing that history will remember him for in a positive light, right? That we are in the midst of a pandemic and that Trump rushed the vaccine, Operation Warp Speed, et cetera, et cetera. And you know what? There is some truth to that. And history probably would remember it that way if the vaccine turned out to be what people were saying it was, but we know now it doesn't stop transmission. We now know that it was used as a weapon against people to divide us, to segregate society. Um, and so I don't think anyone on the right is looking at what Trump did with the vaccine fondly. And I think that a lot of people on the left, you know, are not looking at what Trump did with the vaccine fondly. And then you have the other sect of the left that just pretend that Trump didn't even, you know, get us the vaccine with Operation Warp Speed, right? So I'm annoyed that Trump took this opportunity two days before midterms to attack DeSantis. I don't see the benefit of that for anyone. Um, and you know, right now this that right now is the day before midterms, and so people are saying that Trump might announce that he's running for president again today at some point. I don't think so. It's already what three p.m. I mean, who knows? I guess it could. However, um, I kind of just feel like Trump time has passed. I just feel like you know, DeSantis has really been an example of how to fight in a way that even Trump didn't. Because if you think about it, if you remember, Trump spent a lot of his uh, pregnancy. That is a pregnancy. Presidency, bitch. Trump spent a lot of his presidency worried about why the left didn't like him, right? Worried about legacy media, worried about the corporate press, and worried about headlines that were being run, which was a losing battle. You shouldn't have even cared. You should have just fought back with everything you had, you know? When I think... It's like, I appreciate what Trump did, so it's not to be a Trump fasting session. I appreciate that Trump taught the right kind of how to fight back because pre-Trump Republicans were pussies. They still are to a large extent. And, you know, say that there is a red wave tomorrow in the midterms and we do get everything we want. I still don't have hope that Republicans are really going to be fighting back and wielding their power in the way that I would hope. However, they do fight a lot more than than pre-Trump. And so I appreciate that. And so I'm kind of feeling like, you know, Trump walks so DeSantis can run. I want I want DeSantis as president. I really do. DeSantis hasn't made a move that I disagree with like really once, you know, and and he's not the sort of like ill speaker that Trump was. And granted, it really is 
a blue pilled idea to even really care that much about how people speak you know like the biggest thing people hated about trump was he was just so loose at the mouth right they were living in fear and trembling and shaking over what tweet was happening and the way he was saying certain things and you know you had the mexicans or rapists you know quote that followed him forever that if people really look into it he wasn't even talking about it's just the fact is trump gave the left a lot of ammunition and it's not necessarily his fault it's just a simple reality of how he spoke and who he was DeSantis does not give them that kind of ammunition. DeSantis, what I have seen, routinely puts Democrats up against the wall and has them sort of like forced to argue in a way that makes them look stupid when he did the don't say gay bill. It was not the don't say gay bill. And leftists completely lied about what that was, right? And I talked about that in my episode with Ariel Scarcella. Go check it out if you need to. Um, but he made leftists look stupid. He made He enacted policy that when leftists had to argue against it, they looked crazy. They were arguing for children learning about sexuality. No one thinks that's cool, at least no one with their right mind. And so I appreciate that he routinely makes them like be honest about their views. Um, I just think it's DeSantis' time. I want him as president and that's who I am going for. Again, I'll vote for Trump, but I'm a little exhausted and I don't appreciate attacking him before midterms. So have you guys started holiday shopping yet? Literally, why not if you haven't? You know most gifts don't go bad, right? The only thing that'll go bad between now and Christmas are the lines at the mall. 12 children screaming, 11 minutes to find parking or more, 10 Karens Karening. Who wants to deal with that? I don't. When you're looking for a gift everyone needs or a stocking stuffer that is not a candle or a t-shirt for once, <laughs> Raycons are the way to go. Right now you can shop early, skip the lines, skip the stress, and get someone or yourself the amazing gift of Raycon. And you can definitely find Raycons in stores now like Kohl's and Walmart, but let me tell you that if you're looking for the best deal, you're always gonna be able to find it at my link, buyraycon.com slash Blair White and use code EARLYBF to get 20% off site-wide. That's 20% off any Raycon product, which almost never happens by the way, or save even bigger and get 30% off of Raycon's holiday bundles. That's code earlybf at buyraycon.com slash Blair White for 20% off your Raycon purchase. All right, guys, Aaron Carter dies at 34. Very sad. You know, anyone who has kind of seen Aaron on social media the past few years knows that he's been a fucking wreck on drugs out of his mind right just his appearance alone it's like it was very sad and it wasn't shocking when i saw it right interestingly i saw um adam 22 tweet that he heard about aaron dying before the entire rest of the world i saw him tweet it and i was like are you kidding he tweeted he tweeted that his friend found aaron carter unresponsive or something um and so i googled it and literally nothing came up so Adam 22 was the first person to break that. But story time, Aaron Carter was my first crush as a child. And so I actually got pretty emotional over hearing about him passing, you know. Um, he was the first concert I ever went to as a child. My parents took me to see Aaron Carter when I was like five at, I believe, it was like some theme park. I think it was like Six Flags or something. He was doing a concert there with the band A-teens, also my favorite as a, as a kid. Um, and I used to like hang up like magnets of Aaron Carter on my refrigerator and I would like tell people I have a crush on him and I was like six, seven years old and like other kids and like my cousins and stuff would be like, but you're a boy. Why do you have a crush on a boy? And I'm like, I don't know. I just like him. <laughs> so very sad that he passed away. Uh, condolences to his family. Although I think I want to put this in the episode. So editor, please clip in this after I say this, but um, he had said that his family was, was setting him up to be killed basically. And that if he dies suddenly that it was his family and that's really, really disturbing. That's a clip that's been going around on Twitter. Um, to my knowledge, it's real. I mean, I know there's some deep fakes now, but it looked very fucking real. This is Aaron Carter. I want to verify that this is actually my GoFundMe page. Um, there's been a lot of misdirection that I've had to do in order to protect myself um, from being the sil silence breaker for um, my brother who is a rapist. And um, now they're after my life. My whole family is after my life. And uh, they're setting me up. And Sony Records owes me $3.5 million. And they don't 
want to pay me, and it would be in their better interest, just like Michael told me, um, and Brad Paisley, who sued Sony Records for $10 million. Um, they owe me money, and they're trying to kill me off. And uh, I'm begging you, and I'm pleading you, help me raise $100,000 as soon as I can, so I can move to an undisclosed location where I'm safe. My realtor won't sell my house. They're all involved in this, and they're trying to keep me there. They had somebody, they had cops come and check for a rope in my garage, saying I wanted to hang myself. So please trust what I'm saying, and please don't... So, I'm not making any accusations, but it is shady. And there's something to be said about the way that Hollywood, like, what happens to childhood stars in Hollywood, right? It's like, very few make it out alive or sane. And Aaron Carter is a casualty of that, and I just feel really bad for him um, and his family. So, on to the next story. Rest in peace, Aaron. Twitter owner Musk throws weight behind Republicans in U.S. midterms. So, this today, this happened today, and it has people in a fucking tizzy on Twitter. So, Elon basically tweeted. Let's see if I can get the tweet here. How's this article not going to have the tweet? Like, are you joking? Let me see. Oh, he said, shared power curbs the worst excesses of both parties. Therefore, I recommend voting for a Republican Congress, given that the presidency is democratic. So people are upset because the owner of a social media app has declared, you know, a bias towards one side and encouraged people to vote in a certain way. I'm sorry. I don't have any fucking empathy for people freaking out about this because they didn't say shit when Twitter was ran by Democrats very obviously ran by Democrats. The trending page every single day is Democrat steered. You know, we have this article that I also pulled up here saying um, the most wonderful time of the year is approaching. And if you own an online store or you have a business where you ship things out, you're going to want to know about ShipStation. If you have an online store, you know the feeling of putting off shipping out orders until the last minute and it never works out. ShipStation turns holiday ship shows into smooth sailing so you can keep your customers happy and still find some time to enjoy that eggnog. There was a time for me when I was handling shipping on my merch, and let me tell you, it was a lot. And I definitely wish I had ShipStation going back to that time. ShipStation works with all your favorite places to sell online like eBay, Amazon, Shopify, and more. You're able to manage all your orders from one simple dashboard, print shipping labels, automate routine shipping tasks, and easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize shipping. And there are tons of companies that already use ShipStation. Shout out to Wolfgang Puck Home. And you should be too. So this holiday season, give yourself the gift of stress-free holiday shipping. Use promo code Blair at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com and promo code Blair. And now back to the video. Twitter board members give tens of thousands to Democratic candidates. So where, why weren't you guys bitching at that point? And, and guess what? If you're upset about it, you have Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, every other fucking so YouTube, every other social media network ran by Democrats and that you're going to feel nice and safe and warm making content on and tweeting and posting, right? Th this is literally just left us getting a very tiny taste of their own medicine and they cannot fucking handle it. And there's something to be said about the fact that I was thinking on this the other day. It is so far from normal that an entire major political party in the United States not only doesn't care about free speech and doesn't believe in it, but actively fights to disarm it, actively fights against it. The fact that it is literally an entire party who only can compete in the marketplace of ideas if there is zero competition, that has to censor disagreements, that has to ban people, that has to cancel people from society in order for their ideas to, to sound sane. And we've just kind of accepted that this is like what it is, right? Like we just kind of accept that free speech is more of a right-wing value. That is so toxic that we accept that. We should have two parties that both support free speech and we literally don't have it and it's just like one of those things that it's like once it becomes the paradigm people just treat it like it's normal no it's not normal that leftists don't agree with free speech it's not normal that leftists actively fight against it in fact it's really fucked up and yet another reason why i hope you're voting red tomorrow so you know, the thing about elon musk is 
I don't even think necessarily Elon Musk is like a, a conservative. Like I haven't seen anything from him that's particularly conservative. What I've seen is he sees Democrats are fucking crazy, but that's par for the course. You don't have to even be a conservative to see that. I don't think I'm truly a conservative. I mean, here's the thing. Words are words, right? And like, I've been called conservative from the beginning of like my career and like news outlets write conservative trans person, conservative that. And it's like, I don't think I've ever even called myself conservative. If I have, go ahead and fact check me. But if I say it, it's only in the sense of like, people just say it. So it's like, why not say it? I don't feel like I'm conservative. To me, I feel like conservatism denotes like a, a religious worldview that I just simply don't have. Um, I'm also fairly liberal in the classical sense on social issues. I don't feel like I'm conservative. I feel like Elon's kind of conservative in the way that I am, which is why I kind of fuck with it. But, you know, again, people are so upset about Elon Musk having a bias. It's like, I don't feel bad for you. You, you didn't say shit about Jack. You didn't say shit about the other leadership on these social network websites. And it's like for everyone to be leaving the platform because people are not going to be getting banned for disagreeing with them anymore. It's like, it shows your confidence in your ideas and your ideology and your worldview that the only way you can express it is if there's no opposition. What the fuck is that? Like, are you demented? My God, these people would never last a day as a Republican or a conservative. They would never last a fucking day feeling like that pressure on their college campus that they can't say anything, right? That they're outnumbered at work or they're outnumbered. It's like you wouldn't last a fucking day because Elon Musk owning Twi is owning Twitter now and you're shitting your pants. Try being a fucking Republican in the workplace, in school, on social media, like for a day. You, you would crumble. You would fucking cry. So that's that on that. This one, this one's so disgusting. Governor Whitmer has described women as people with a period. <laughs> Stupid bitch. If y'all don't vote this demon out tomorrow, I'm going to be pissed. I used to live in Michigan. Michigan's beautiful. It's very unfortunate that a demon is running the state currently. Um, do we Let's play the video and then I have a lot to say about this bitch. Make sure the volume's up. Bipartisan tax cut will help reduce the economic burden of the cost of menstrual products, especially for lower income Michiganders. Saving people with a period from paying taxes on up to $4,800 in spending over the course of their lifetime. Is it not demeaning to be referred to as a person with a period? Like, I don't understand. The way in which, like, the left talks about women is so vile. It's like, what happened to being pro-woman? I don't understand. What happened to being the party of women's admiration? It's like, how dare you? It's like the way they refer to them as like bleeders or people with a uterus or people with, they're women, right? And trans men get their period too. No one's saying they don't, right? And trans men are a group of people that are going to need those items, I'm sure. However, when you're like 0.1% of the customer base, maybe just like suck it up a little bit and not be like such a fucking pansy that you can't handle people just referring to tampons as women products. Because they are. And yes, there is a small number of people that also use these products, but it's like at what expense and now women have to be called people with a period. It's just so gross. Um, but, but you know, this is not the most of why I hate this bitch, right? This is annoying, but it's not the worst of it. Let's rewind to 2020 when she literally banned people from growing their own fucking food. She had grocery stores blocking off sections where people could buy seeds and like things to plant food. I don't know what all the items are to plant vegetables and, and crops and shit, right? I've never done it. However, she did that. And why this is this goes back to like letting the government have all this power. How anyone who steps foot on this planet and breathes the same air as every other human being thinks that they can stop people from growing food. One of the most basic, like, primal, animalistic, like, going back to, like, the beginning of time, it's like, how dare you? 
And at a time where people were risking their lives, supposedly, to go to the grocery store and you were like, and you can't, you have to go to the grocery store where you may get, you know, infected rather than staying home and growing your own shit. Are you demented? She's a literal demon. I also saw a clip recently where she said, where she basically was denying that she did anything wrong by closing schools for so long. And she was like, we were just going off the data from a hundred years ago and past pandemics. Fuck you. Fuck you. She, she's the devil. If she's not voted out next month, I'm going to be very pissed at you, Michigan. Very pissed. <laughs> I'm on one today. The Hollywood Reporter says Whoopi Goldberg quits Twitter as celebrity exits continue. This place is a mess. You will not be missed, girl. First of all, I doubt you're even actually on Twitter. I'm sure you have some assistant that you're paying to do your tweets for you. However, Whoopi, you're not going to be missed. And again, the fact that now that the playing field is like somewhat level, and it's not even completely level, by the way, because Elon actually posted um, like an amended guidelines TOS thing. And a lot of the rules are still leftist favored. You know, there's still rules you can get banned for dead naming, which I don't think dead naming is cool. I think it's fucked up. Um, but it's like, you know, that, that is a leftist policy that was in there, right? These people can't handle having to actually compete in the marketplace of ideas. And it's so fucking telling. And it should make you, you know, first of all, I know people may get annoyed that I'm like very partisan, especially on my podcast, because I'm a partisan person. I'm very upfront about it. I am a Republican. I've never voted Democrat. So that's just my own bias, right? I would hope that even like the lefties who watch, like, is this not telling that these ideas don't hold up so much to the extent that they cannot be spoken anywhere where there's any pushback and opposition? I don't understand. You know, Kathy Griffin was also uh, banned off Twitter for impersonating Elon. And I don't know, I didn't think she should have been banned. But at the same time, it's like they don't know how to handle everything not being rigged in their favor. And it's so fucking, it's just, it's just funny watching them freak out about it. And also the blue check mark thing. I don't know how much I love the idea of people paying for a blue check mark because for me, I don't want to sound like some fucking elitist, but like, I don't know, bitch, I worked hard for the blue check mark. And the fact that you can just pay for $8 does kind of suck, but it's not my fucking platform. It's Elon's platform. That's what he wants to do. That's what he wants to do. Regardless, whoopee, bitch, bye. Can we talk about how fucking annoying the view is? I, I just want to talk about that for a second because Whoopi is like, I think my number one pet peeve with her is how often she says, listen, she'll be like saying, I don't know, they're getting an example. She's like, and then I was like, listen, like she says the word listen like 10 times in the fucking sentence. The show is just so gross. That's another thing. The whole level playing field thing. Why is it always five liberal hosts and one conservative host? And that conservative host can never be a Trump supporter. It has to be a Meghan McCain. It has to be a, a whoever the fuck is on there now, right? Granted, I like Meghan. Um, I disagree with her a lot, but I've met her in person and she's very sweet. Um, and she's been outwardly supportive of me. And I think that that's great. I appreciate that. Um, and she's pregnant, so congratulations. Shout out to you, Meghan, for being pregnant. Have another little baby. Uh, I wanted to literally put my hat in to be a co-host on The View. It would never happen. Um, but there was a part of me, like, when Megan left, I was like, girl, I wanted to be like, slip me, like, a phone number to figure out how to be on The View because how fucking sickening would it be to have, like, a trans right-wing host? Sickening. But that would never happen. All right. White House may have violated law by deleting fact check tweet. Another. The, the, the theme of this podcast is... The blue pills are running scared. They are terrified. I've never seen the White House get fact-checked on Twitter until Elon became. Well, I did under Trump, obviously. Every fucking tweet Trump put out, there was some sort of thing from Twitter underneath it saying this is incorrect. This is, it's like, it was stupid. And oftentimes they were splitting hairs and not actually correcting anything. But um, Biden got back fact-checked. This is what happens when a platform's actually playing fair. So a watchdog group is calling for a federal investigation into a tweet that the White House deleted this week, arguing that the Biden administration may have violated the Presidential Records Act. Protect the Public's Trust, a nonpartisan organization. Never heard of them. 
argued there are serious questions over whether presidential record keeping protocols were properly followed before the White House on Wednesday deleted the widely mocked tweet, taking credit for a boost in retirees' social security checks. The tweet is almost certainly a record that belongs to the public and is subject to the act destruction protocol. I mean, I agree to an extent. I, I definitely see where they're coming from. But to me, the larger story is the fact that they would delete the tweet, which means they knew that they were fucking lying. If you're deleting a tweet because it got fact-checked, you knew you were fucking lying. And one thing you could say about Trump, at least, he wasn't deleting these things when they got fact-checked. If anything, it was like, no, fuck you. Fuck you. So they're just running scared. They can't handle it. It's like they're so used to just blind obedience that the smallest amount of pushback and it's like they're panicking. And you know what? As they fucking should. All right. This next one, I'm just, I'm, I'm in love with this next one because, you know, I've always really fucked with the nanny, Fran Drescher. And I just am loving that she put this out. So I'm going to play this and we'll talk about it. So to think that every human on the planet can take one vaccine is ludicrous. And to make that one vaccine the criteria for who is allowed to work, travel, dine, go to theater, etc., is an infringement on the Disabilities Act, the Freedom of Religion Act, and body sovereignty. We as a nation must be very careful that fear does not turn into fascism. When equal citizens stop being equal, when cards must be presented to identify whether you are included or excluded, we stand at a tipping point of an America I no longer recognize. And even though I myself am vaccinated, I must applaud Disney for taking the position not to vaccine mandate their sets any longer. The problem with discrimination is that there will always be good people who justify it because of an extreme condition. But it is those times especially when we must fight even harder to protect the sanctity of freedom for all and never succumb to an us versus them mentality. Above all else, freedom. Peace. I'm loving the base nanny. Fran Drescher is that bitch. I've always really liked her. I've always, I would like watch all her interviews and stuff on YouTube a few years ago. I, I fell into like a Fran Drescher hole. She's actually a very intelligent woman. And, you know, I wish, here's the thing. I, I do have a bit of mixed feelings because I do wish that celebrities like herself were speaking out before, right? Before tens of millions of people were coerced into a vaccine they otherwise would have not gotten if they had the information. Before so many liberties were infringed upon. And I wish she would have spoken out when Disney had the policy, not just now that it's gone. So I have to say that. However, it does make me happy and it is a big white pill to see that people are just finally like just fucking saying the shit, fucking truth, just saying shit how it is. Um, again, wish it was sooner, but I'm, I'm thankful for it. And she's absolutely right. You know, I don't know specifically, like she was saying it was infringing upon all these different like acts and whatever. I don't know that. I don't, I'm not getting into the weeds with that. But on just like a moral level, she's absolutely correct. You know, that's what I always was thinking. It's like, in what world is one size fits all ever a thing it, it, that works for humanity, right? So the idea that everyone had to take this one vaccine and that everyone had consequences if they didn't, it's like, what a disgusting collectivist, like hive mind, nightmare fuel situation is that? Um, and she's right that the, the segregation of society, you know, I, I talk about it ad nauseum on this fucking podcast. We all know how the fuck I feel. I'm horrified that we did that fucking fucked up little experiment for as long as we did. Um, but I'm glad people are coming around and I'm glad people have the freedom now to talk about it. I just wish those slings and arrows that those of us got in the thick of it weren't so bad. But it is what it is. I'm still here. I wasn't banned for it. A lot of people were. Could have been worse. Oh, God, this one's ridiculous, bitch. Far left Portland City Council member says voting for a Latino opponent is a vote for white supremacy. So... 
Her name's Hardesty. Joanne Hardesty. And she's a crazy bitch. You can tell by looking at her. It, there's something to be said about people who just look crazy, right? It's like sometimes, in fact, most of the time, if you look crazy, you kind of just are. Um, it's not all the time, you know what I mean? But you can just tell when someone has crazy in their fucking eyes, and this bitch surely does. And she's in Portland. Again, all these West Coast states, it's like, this is something in the water, like the Pacific. I, I don't, I don't know. But it's just ridiculous how people really take these leftist arguments about race seriously when they're willing to call people who aren't even white white supremacists. Like, I will forever be labeled that by my detractors, which honestly, keep doing it. Keep fucking using this word so fucking much. Keep fucking overusing it. Keep calling minorities white supremacists. Keep, use it as much as you fucking want. Because all it's doing is the people who are falsely labeled with those things, it's making that less of a burden on them. It's like words like white supremacist, racist, transphobic, sexist. It's like all these things hold almost no weight anymore. And you know what? That's scary because I always talk about the pendulum swinging back. It's going to. It kind of feels like it already is. In fact, I, I think it is. I think we're in the midst of that pendulum swing. Um, and once we're in the thick of it, and then maybe there really is some racist shit going on. Maybe there is some transphobic shit going on. Maybe there is this and that. It's like you're going to be a lot less equipped to fight it because people are not going to fucking take you seriously. So again, vote this bitch out too. Vote this fucking bitch out. Vote anyone out who feels that it's okay to manipulate the public's conscience through the emotion and through slander and through all this shit. Like these people are the fucking devil. Vote this bitch out. I know you won't though, because you're Portland, but you know what? Maybe someday you'll get there. I have heard word of like, possibly California feeling a little bit of the red wave that's coming in. We'll see if that happens. Not gonna keep my fucking hopes up. Children's Minnesota Gender Clinic treats pre-verbal toddlers for gender dysphoria. Bitch. You know you gotta be fucking demented to think that a child has an understanding that they're trans before they can even speak. By the way, I, I'm gonna rant on this one because my next main channel video is actually addressing this. I'll do a little bit here too. It's what I, kind of what I've been doing lately. Like I talked about the Dylan Mulvaney shit and then I did a main channel video on it. I'm gonna talk about this shit and then do a main channel video on it. So I had this clip that leftists love to share of me on Joe Rogan talking about how I felt like I was different at five. Keyword different, not transgender. He were different. I was obviously effeminate even at five. I felt, you know, out of place with my gender, but I obviously didn't have a fucking comprehensive understanding that I was going to grow up and be transgender, right? Like five-year-olds can't really have that unless you plant it into their heads. People think it's some sort of contradiction that I am against children transitioning, but also felt gender dysphoria as a child. As if those are contradictory, even remotely, People may be disturbed by this comparison, but it's pretty well documented and it's a fact of life that children also have sexual urges at times. I remember being 12 or 13 and thinking my PE teacher was hot. Does that mean I could have consented to interactions with my PE teacher? Absolutely fucking not. You can have feelings of gender dysphoria as a child and still not be able to consent to a sex change. Like, there's something to be said about how often consent has to be explained to these fucking people and they just still don't ever fucking get it. Yes, children have feelings early. That doesn't mean they can consent. I don't think I was ever in a position as a child to consent to any of the things I did as a trans woman, as an adult. That's why I was an adult. But anyways, it, th this story is demented. The director of the gender health program at Minnesota Children's Hospital believes children can know that they're transgender from as young as age three and that some boys don't have penises and some girls don't have vaginas. You know, there was a thing going around recently. I think it was the Boston Children's Hospital. Shout out to these children's hospitals that should be these children's hospitals that should be doing things like, I don't know, like curing cancer, fixing like shit kids are really going through and not trying to give kids sex changes. But anyways. The idea, no, the Boston Children's Hospital, they put out a thing saying that you can actually know that you're trans in the womb. In the fucking womb, bitch. 
it really <laughs> is insane to me that I'm supposed to, on paper, see these entities fighting for me, right? Me, quotations, and be on board with it. That because I'm fucking transgender, I'm supposed to look at the Boston Children's Hospital saying that people know they're trans in the womb and be like, yes, thank you for, for helping spread information about what it is to be me. Fuck you. And this gender clinic treating pre-verbal toddlers. They can't even fucking talk yet. You psychopathic, disgusting, irredeemable, like ravenous pig bitches. Y'all are some fucking pigs. If, if you are putting it in pre-verbal children's heads that they are supposed to be the opposite gender, you are a pig bitch. I don't care. It's disgusting. It's child abuse. And honestly, people, I saw someone tweeting the other day saying that um, people get way too caught up in like the trans child discourse and how people should be focusing on other things. You know what? I actually don't think so. I think the right should continue making this as big of an issue as it is because it's a very clear way to determine if someone is sane or not. You either think this is child abuse or you don't. And if you don't, there is no conversation to be had with you. I don't want to share a country with you. I don't want to share a state with you. I don't want to share dinner with you. There is there is nothing redeemable about you if you think that pre-verbal children need to be taught that they are transgender. Because that's what it is. You know, I, you have my quote that I tweet all the time. A few times a year I tweet it. It always goes viral because it's fucking true. A transgender three-year-old is like a vegan cat. We all know who's making the lifestyle decisions. Because it's true. A vegan cat is not going to pick up vegan cat food. Just like a toddler, a pre-verbal child is not going to be transgender. Even if they were born with gender dysphoria, at three, the idea that an adult can make that assessment based on what? Just liking toys of a certain type? A little boy liking Barbies? A little girl liking monster trucks? Fuck you. Every gay guy I know played with Barbies. Every lesbian I know played with monster trucks, you know, replace it with whatever boy or girl toy they did. You get what I'm saying? It's like pigs, fucking pigs, what they're doing to people. I can't take it. Here's an interesting story. So if you are an OG follower of my main channel, you would know that once upon a time I had beef with a motherfucker named Gazi Kozo. And not enough people are talking about this, but this is a very interesting story because he was recently found with a dead body in his home. People refer to him as Black Hitler because he would make these videos where he would be like screaming at black people or white people on the street to like bow down to him. Like he was the definition of a black supremacist, which is possible. I don't want to see one person in the comments saying it's impossible. You can be a supremacist of any race. If you believe your race is superior, congrats, you're a racial supremacist. So Ghazi, he was like challenging me to a debate or something, or I challenged him and then he only wanted to do it if he was paid and I ended up not showing up because I'm not going to pay him. I just did a video about it. But it's very interesting how, say what you want about me. I feel very confident about the work that I do. People act like I'm putting so much negativity in the world. If the people that I have beef with are people who have dead bodies found in their home, Ghazi Kozo. Pedos, Jessica Heaney. It's like, I'm sorry, I'm not the bad guy here. <laughs> if you can make the person beefing with them the bad guy, congrats. But um, let's read some of this because it's absolutely demented. I never thought, I mean, I guess I could have saw this coming, but this is just it's, it, insane. Far left activist Ghazi Kozo rose to internet notoriety last year with a series of bizarre online pronouncements he made as the leader of a French communist group called the Black Hammer Organization. On Tuesday... This cult that he has, the Black Hammer organization, culminated in tragedy. That morning, an anonymous caller in a suburban Atlanta home rented by Black Hammer contacted police to report they were being held against their will. When police searched the home, they ordered uh, Kozo and nine other people outside. In the house, they found an 18-year-old man named Amante dead at what police call an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. So he's like housing a body in this cult. I don't know what else to say other than like, this is fucking insane. Like 
I feel very vindicated of having beef with this person because what a fucking freak. <laughs> oh my God, this one's horrible. This is okay. This next one is like one of the Blair White is obligated to fucking talk about it, but Blair White does not want to talk about it. Articles, okay? <laughs> Transgender inmate now identifies as baby, demands diaper and baby food in prison. Daniel Eastwood identified himself as a woman and insisted on being referred to as Sophie Eastwood. Daniel's request was considered and fulfilled by the prison staff. Now the 36-year-old murderer, murderer, says he is a baby and wants to be treated as an infant. He also demanded that his food be pureed by the prison staff and then be he given diapers. So we're going to add this onto the list of things that I really don't want to make it about me. But you know what? Fuck it. I don't care. I, I'm not going to be deluded into thinking that I can't give myself props on this. I'm just going to speak honestly. I talked about the transgender prison shit years ago before it was a thing. I talked about the vaccine shit. I talked about the detransitioner shit, all of which have become major issues have now come to light. There was a time where people were saying, no, it's just one odd case in Britain, one odd case in these other more liberal countries where there was a trans inmate and went to a women's facility. And now it's happening all the time here in the US. It's more and more of a thing. And it's one of those blind spots that of course the left will not address, but you know, it just goes to show you, it's like they're letting this shit, this ideology run amok. And this is just another example of that. Um, I really would like to know if he's going to be given the baby stuff in prison, like that would be next level. I, that I would hope is off the table, but you know what? How demented am I? It's, it's, it'd be more crazy to house a violent male murderer in a women's prison than it is to give a male murderer baby food in a male prison. So look what they even did to me. I'm so fucking demented now that I'm like, yeah, you can put him in a women's prison, but it'd be crazy to give him baby food. No, the women's prison part is even crazier. Like, why do women in prison have to put up with this? Why do women in women's shelters have to put up with this? It's so disgusting. All right. It, it's a wrap for this podcast, you guys. These stories were demented. I love you guys. I'm loving doing this podcast, and I'm really loving that you guys are loving it. I know that some people probably miss the guest format, and we'll still do guest episodes. I don't want to make it sound like we're never going to do that again, but there's something about just sitting here with y'all, running my fucking mouth, and talking about everything that I wish I could talk about more on the main channel that is just so freeing and fun. So uh, hopefully you guys are liking the format right now. And uh, if you start hating it, we'll switch it up. It's all what we want to do together, you know? So follow this podcast channel. Follow me on my main channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And please, by the way, rate the show on Spotify. The ratings help so much. We have over a thousand ratings. And from what I've seen, a lot of shows that have been very long running, take even longer to get to 1K ratings than we did. This show on Spotify has just soared. So um, it really helps. So please keep it up. Please give us more ratings on Spotify. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys are audio listeners and you just maybe have forgotten to rate. Now's a great time to rate. So I love you guys and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye guys.